In this video, I'll be showing you how to launch your first MailChimp campaign. I will cover authenticating your domain, collecting emails from your website, managing your audience list, and finally pulling this all together and sending your first email campaign. Whilst you can use a free email address, for example a Gmail address, when sending your MailChimp campaigns, it is a much better idea to use your own domain, for example vendlab.com, when sending your emails, because it looks more professional and you have a lower chance of ending up in a spam folder. So if you want to verify your domain in MailChimp, go to, go to the top right hand corner and click account, and then it'll show you account information and then click domains. Then click add and verify domain. It'll ask you to enter an email from the domain you wish to send from. So I'm going to put in trevor at and then click send verification email. Okay, then I need to just check my email. Then I check my email, it's going to give me a code. And I put it in here and the domain is now verified. The next step is the auth authentication. Authentication is critical to the deliverability of, for your email campaigns for MailChimp. It provides a trackable identifier that demonstrates to your subscriber's ISP that you are a legitimate sender and improves your chances of getting into the inbox. So let's just go through the process of authenticating. So in again, we're in um, accounts and then domains, and then we want to do look at custom email domains and then do start authentication. So start the email authentication process. It asks us who the email provider is. So I'm going to put GoDaddy because that's the host. And it's telling us we need to go into our GoDaddy domain center and add a record to the DNS. So let's go into GoDaddy. So I've logged into the GoDaddy account. If I scroll down and I see our domains and I do manage the DNS, so I click on DNS. And if we go back to MailChimp. And it's telling us that we need to create a C name record from um, using the information they give us. So it wants us to add a new record. So the type is a C name record and the name, which is the host, we copy that and we cut and paste that in there. And the value, copy that. And that is every half hour, that's fine. So if we save that, and then we need to do the same for the second one. Let's just copy that, copy that and do save. Now, if we go back to here, let's just get rid of that information. Do next and wait for MailChimp to check these records. We check status. It may take a little while to validate these changes, but if you come back later and then click check status, then it should say success here, at which point that you have then authenticated your main domain and there's a, there's a greater chance that your emails will go into the inbox and not into spam. All website owners should be actively collecting emails and building their email list. One of the best ways of doing this is to have a pop-up form on your site which collects email addresses. In order to do this, you need to integrate your website platform, for example, Shopify, with MailChimp. First, log into your MailChimp account, then go to Integrations at the left-hand menu, and then Manage. Then click Connect New App. Then search for Shopify, and click on the Shopify app. Next click, get started. That will take you to the Shopify store if you click install for the app. Then be asked to log into your Shopify store. And then the next stage is to install the app. Then you'd be asked to connect your website. This one's called Hello Baby to MailChimp. So let's just log into the MailChimp account by clicking the, lo the green login button. And log in. Get a verification code. Authorize MailChimp. Next, we have to review our sync settings. This is how the data between MailChimp and Shopify synchronizes. There's a number of options to set here. First, the audience that is being used. So this is the audience in MailChimp where the data from Shopify is stored. 
we have to choose the contact types which are stored in Shopify. We've, the options are subscribed users and non-subscribed users. So subscribed users, they have to be have to be synchronized. These are people who have opted in to receive marketing communication from the Shopify account. And also non-subscribed users. These are contacts that have, have interacted with the store, for example, made a purchase, but haven't opted in to receive mail, email marketing. MailChimp can still use them, for example, in retargeting ads. But remember, if you sync non-subscribed users, you will need, then need a bigger MailChimp account. So which is the next point here, it's saying that there's in this account, there's nearly 60,000 contacts. But you'll need a plan in, in MailChimp, which can cope with that number of people. In Shopify, you can tag or you can tag customers. And this next bit is asking us whether we want to sync all the tags or whether it'll only sync the tags which you specify. If you only want to sync specific tags, then that is changed in settings, tag settings, sync custom tags. Finally, data fields. This is where you determine the data fields of the map between Shopify and MailChimp. So we can edit that and you can select the fields. So if we click sync now, then this will start the sync process between Shopify and MailChimp. Because there's a lot of data here, this is going to take quite a long time to sync. So let's just click to continue on to MailChimp. And here we can see that the integration has been set up. It's syncing the information here. So here, this the integration has been set up. It's pulling in the data from Shopify into MailChimp. If we scroll down to the bottom, there's a number of settings. Again, it's telling us which the synced MailChimp audience is. That's the only audience, which is called vendlab.com. Giving us the option to create a pop-up form. We'll be talking about that in a future lecture. The next option is to sync the Shopify tags. It's asking you whether you want to sync the tags automatically or only sync specific tags. So once to change this, we need to go back into the MailChimp app. Go to the app in Shopify, then tag syncing. We would need to deactivate syncing all tags and activate sync custom tags. And then we'd need to choose the tags we want to sync. There's an option here to turn in double opt-in. A double opt-in is when a customer signs up on the website, they then sent an email, and they need to click on email as well to actually opt in. If you select this, then you'll have fewer people on your list because the customer has to go through more steps to get onto the list, but you will have a higher quality list. The other options here is sync non-subscribe contacts to MailChimp. We talked about that just now when we were setting up the MailChimp app. And the last option is sync new subscribers to Shopify. That's the option to automatically create customers in Shopify when new subscribers are added to the MailChimp audience. So I've logged back into MailChimp and I've gone to the audience. If I click on our contacts, look at the column here, we've got source and we can see that it started the import and the source is MailChimp for Shopify. So we can see that the sync between Shopify and MailChimp has started. And over a few hours, all the Shopify customers will be imported into MailChimp and you can start sending them campaigns. Now that you've integrated your website with MailChimp, you can create a pop-up form and start collecting email addresses. So for example, on this side, hellobabydirect.com, if we wait a few seconds, you see we have this pop-up form on the right-hand side, which invites people to sign up for the newsletter and get the latest offers and updates. You can create your pop-up form by going into MailChimp and then audience and then sign up forms and then click pop-up form. Remember that the pop-up form will appear on the site which you have integrated with MailChimp. So you first need to have integrated your site and that can be done under integrations at the bottom here. If we go back to sign up forms and there is a WYSIWYG editor for editing your sign up form. So the first option at the top here is style where you can choose the font, the colors, the headings and the font size. And secondly, you can select the layout. So we have a number of different layouts with different positioning of the sign up box and the picture, etc. So let's just choose the top one and let's look at the Elon sign up box. So if you want to change this, if you want to change a particular element, you can click here, replace. You can select a different photo, let's close that. Or you can change the message, you can just click on there and change it. If you click plus here, you can choose the field you want to enter. So let's just choose first name, and then we'll do last name. If you click on mobile banner, you can see how it look on a mobile site. And finally, success message. This is the message you'll be shown on your site after the subscriber has subscribed. If you click settings on the left hand side, you can change the options for the pop up box. If we do general settings, you can choose when it's displayed. So you can choose um, after a, a certain period of time and also where it's displayed. You can also determine how often it is before it is shown to the same user again. Banner settings, this is whether the sets whether the mobile banner is enabled. 
the form settings, you show MailChimp badge, chooses whether you want to show the MailChimp badge or not. I think if you have a paid account and you have the option not to show the badge, then you there's really no need to show it. You don't want to advertise them. Finally, success settings shows how long the confirmation message is shown for. Once you finish setting up your form, you can click save changes and that will then appear on your live site. Emails that you collect are managed in something called a MailChimp audience. Let's take a look at how this works. There are three types of audience member. A subscribed contact is a person who has opted in to receive your marketing emails. These are people who are actively receiving emails from your marketing campaigns. Unsubscribed contact. This is a person who has opted in to receive your marketing emails, but later opted out. And a non-subscribed contact. This is the person who has interacted with your online store, but has never opted in to receive your marketing emails. So how do you create an audience in MailChimp? When you create a MailChimp account, they will automatically create an audience for you. Your audience is your collection of contacts, so you should only need one audience. There are three ways to import contacts into MailChimp. The first is to add subscribers manually one by one. So you do that from your audience or contacts, and then you click on add contacts and then add a subscriber. And from there, you can add in the subscriber details. If you have a large number of contacts you want to get into MailChimp, then you need to do this as some sort of bulk process. This is done from add contacts, then import contacts. And there are three different options here. The first is to import from another service. If we select that, it'll give us the options from the other services we can import from. You need to go through the process of integrating the service and then importing the contacts. Remember that any contacts you import, you need to have permission to market to these people. The second and third options are very similar. You can upload a CSV or tab limited file with the details, or you can cut and paste in the same information. So let's click upload a file and continue. We've got the option here to add the file. So let's just drag and drop the file in and click organize. And we need to select the status of the contact and then whether we want to update any existing contacts or not. This is a dummy file of new contacts, so I don't want to update. At this point, you can specify a tag that you want to be applied to these contacts that enables you to easily sort those contacts from other contacts in your audience. So let's create the tag test. Or you can select a tag that you've already created by from the drop down. Continue to match. So it's now asking us to match the column labels to the contact information. So if we look at the file that we created that I uploaded, it looks like this in Excel. So we've got the email first name and last name in this list, and then I've got the the dummy data I've added here. This is a so-called CSV file, comma separated values, and this is what it looks like in a text file. So we have the first field, comma, second field, third field. And we now get the choice of matching against the fields in MailChimp. So email address, first name, last name looks good. If you had other fields and it would, for example, tags, it would also show columns for that. And next we're going to finalize the import. And then it's giving us a, a summary there if we do complete import and now we've said this added the 33 contacts into the audience so let's just go back to the audience look at all contacts if we now you see we've got them here then the name and then the test now that you've got all the setup done it is time to create your first campaign to create a campaign go to all campaigns in the left hand side and then create new you have a choice of what you want to create. You can create a regular email and automation of a landing page. So in this case, we're creating a regular email campaign. So we click on design email. The first step is to design your email. You can either choose one of the preset templates that MailChimp has created. You can do this based on the kind of email you're going to send. So for example, here, there's an option for a survey, or you can make a product announcement or sell a product. They've already set up optimized templates for that or you can design your own email from scratch. And that is what we're going to choose to do. So if we click apply, then we get a blank canvas. Initially, it will just show you the logo at the top and that is the standard MailChimp header at the bottom. And we can just add some information in here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a, a test Mother's Day email. So we're gonna put a heading in here and the heading is gonna say Happy Mother's Day or Get Ready for Mother's Day. And then we have a number of different options here for the different content types we can add. So for example, we could add a paragraph or a button, divider, logo, etc. cetera. Um, what we're gonna do is we are going to add an image. And we're gonna have a picture, this is like a Mother's Day thing. So we're going to add a pretty picture of some flowers. And 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to have a power graph. Get your great Mother's Day flowers from Trevor's Flowers. We can choose other things we can do. For example, we can change the background. So let's just change the background color and let's change the border around the image. Let's just change the color. You can see we just changed the color background. Then let's add a button. Then let's add a button underneath this. And the button text should be compelling call to action. So let's do shop now, exclamation mark. And the other thing we need to make sure that it goes to the right web address. So let's just put in a, a, my web address. So at every one of these options, you have a WYSIWYG editor change the attributes. Let's finally, let's put some social links at the bottom. So there's links to the social and let's delete. So we've got a short and sweet email going to people's inboxes, get ready for Mother's Day. Once we're happy to design, we can see how it looked with the recipients by clicking preview and we can preview it as it'll appear in different types of devices. So that's on desktop and that's on mobile. In this one, I'd say that the image at the top is a little bit big. The logo is a bit big. It's pushing the rest of the content down. So I'd probably change that if we were sending it out. So if we're happy with the layout of that email, then we can save and exit and it'll take us to the next step. So now we have to fill in the other attributes for this email campaign. First, let's give it a name. Let's call it Mother's Day email. We need to, to select the segment of our, our audience we want to send this to. It's never a good idea to send a blank email to all your audience, much more effective to send to a, a segment of engaged recipients. So let's edit the recipients. By default, this, this email will send to everyone in your audience, but it is a much better idea to send to a subset of people you think will be more receptive to this email. So for example, perhaps people who bought Mother's Day gifts from you last year. So I'm gonna select a tag. I've got one here called Mother's Day 2023. That's people that received a Mother's Day email in 2023. Then we have the option to personalize the name field. If we choose F name, L name, it'll send it to the first name and last name. Let's click save. The next option is the from email address. So let's just edit that. So that moment is going to be sending from the name of the company and it'll be sending from this email address. When sending emails, it's best to send from a named company, something people are going to recognize. Next, the subject. Let's give it an email. Mother's Day is coming soon. That is what people will see in their mailboxes. We can also add some preview text. This is the little snippet that is shown in some mail clients. Get your great Mother's Day flowers from Trevor's Flowers, then save. Then the next option is you choose your send time. So you should choose your send time based on your previous experience of when you get the best open rates. So you can either schedule a time or send now. It's usually best to schedule it. But you need to investigate when the best time to schedule your, your email will be. You can choose a delivery date and a delivery time. Finally, you have the option to post your social media accounts. If you've linked your social media accounts to MailChimp, then it will also post the details to those accounts. And then once you're happy with the email, you can press send and it will, it will get sent to your selected recipients. Once you've sent your email, it would appear under all campaigns and you can see your campaign metrics. So for example, here, newsletter 2024, I can see the number of opens, clicks and revenue, etc. And you can click on view report to see a more detailed report. Thanks for watching the video. If you found it useful, please like it and subscribe to the channel.